This is Susie with Second Unit, where we put the FU in fun, and I'm here with prominent local Phoenix attorney, Rich Gaxiola. Rich, thanks for being on our podcast. Oh, Appreciate welcome. it. I'm going to tell our folks here a little bit about you. It's kind of important, so I'm going to read some of it. Um, you are quoted a lot in various newspapers and online articles. You've gone up against former county attorney Andrew Thomas successfully, I might add. And you uh, just got the dismissal for your clients in the Hells Angels, uh, Hells Angels and Chino Valley shooting case. That's correct, yes. And that leads us to how we got to know you because you've been in Phoenix Magazine uh, quite a few times. And the last time you were quoted in their July uh, 2012 issue on, which I uh, thought was a cute title, Pornizona, which yes, is the, yeah. it's talking about the state of pornography in Arizona. And some people might think is their <clears throat> pornography in Arizona. And let me first say, when I say pornography, I mean adult film industry. I don't mean anything pejorative by it. It's sure. just, I'm used to saying porn. And I think a lot of people are. Let's just get started. Now, I know for sure pornography is legal in the state of California. Yes. And there are certain regulations and guidelines um, production companies have to follow. Is filming professional pornography in Arizona legal? Uh, to my knowledge, yes. And, and here's the real issue that made the public waves to begin with to really create the article. Uh, in California, the state legislature just passed a new law uh, advising everybody in the porn industry to wear condoms. And to a lot of mainstream people who watch porn, that was kind of a turnoff. It kind of desensitized. They wanted to, without the condoms and protection. And so a lot of production companies were considering what state to invest into their production companies and whatnot. And there was some, some investigation out here in Arizona. And they put the fillers out. A few companies did. And word got around to the local prosecutors, local county attorneys around the state. And so they made a public statement against it that they would vigorously prosecute these type of cases. Uh, but there's a bigger issue and a broader issue to, to analyze here, and it's, it's the freedom of commercial speech. And that was kind of the point of the article to discuss that aspect uh, and give a kind of a, a response to the county attorney's position. I was unaware that it was legal or maybe not illegal to film in Arizona. I thought you could be arrested for pandering. Is that not the case? Well, there, that's, that's a pretty broad thing pandering. Uh, pornography, uh, you can conduct pornography in a commercial venue uh, and film, adult film, and it's done all the time uh, in Arizona, matter of fact. Uh, but some of the larger companies from California were attempting to infiltrate Arizona and, and do their productions. Um, there's case law on point in California and there's a wide array of cases up to the Supreme Court that really dictates commercial free speech. So the point of the article was to suggest that the county attorney position, when they publicly promulgated it, it, it might not hold water when it actually came down to the courts. So are you looking for someone to be a test case? Yeah, I, 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 I mentioned that to the editor that it was important, if anybody's interested in coming down here, it would be important to file a federal declaratory action uh, in federal courts to get kind of a fine parameters set forth uh, to determine what rights they had here to do those type of production companies. Do you think that would attract unwanted attention of prosecutors? I, I don't think so. I think it takes place in Arizona already, uh, in various households around Arizona. Uh, you read various publications about people uh, telling on their neighbors, they see various people coming in and out of their homes. So it, it, it already takes place here. So I think for the larger venues, larger production companies who have a lot of money to invest, um, because we're talking about a multi-billion dollar industry, mm -hmm. uh, for them, they should file a declaratory action uh, to get set the parameters for the local county attorneys because it's, it's a federal protected right, commercial speech. Um, do you feel that uh, because it's more established in California, there are certain regulations you have to follow? Um, there are certain acts that is, are more likely to get you raided and prosecuted and your um, adult film actors in California have to undergo STD testing every 28 days, and those results are reported um, not directly to the patient, but actually to production companies. That doesn't exist in Arizona, does it? Do those regulations apply in Arizona? To my knowledge, those regulations uh, are not in the books at this moment in time. Uh, but 
the porn industry can be regulated for a public health issue, uh, certainly. Uh, but the issue of whether or not you can actually create and shoot and film pornography is another issue in and of itself. And that's what you're interested in, in the First Amendment issue of pornography. Sure, sure, sure. To establish that fundamental uh, First Amendment right, commercial speech, to do that. A lot of the First Amendment attorneys at the AVN in Vegas had suggested really flying under the radar in California. In other words, first get a lawyer. First, find out what will call attention to your production company. And there are certain acts you can and can't film um, safely, I guess I should say. Is that something you would suggest in um, for production companies who want to come to Arizona? Oh, absolutely. I think they have to consult with an experienced litigator to understand the complexity of Arizona. Uh, because certainly Arizona courts, I think, are more stringent than California courts. Um, and so you really have to get a plan of attack in motion as to what type of venue you're looking for, uh, what area of town, to have all the legalities resolved before you, you understand what you're getting into. And I think starting off with a declaratory action it is the first thing to do. A lot of um, discussion of pornography and obscenity is the what's tolerated in your community. Is, is that people be Miller or something like that where pornography is sort of community by community? in their, their established um, standards. Uh, do you feel that because Arizona is a red state that pornography can really take hold here the way it has in California? We're pretty conservative. It is a notoriously you know, conservative state. It's by no means. I mean, you look at the, the legislature, you look at the politicians unquestionably and, and the statutes that are, that are, you know, set forth ridiculously year after year of these, these harsher sentences of punishment and crimes that should be on the books. Um, it, it's really not about that. I mean, it's about a federal fundamental right to commercial free speech, and that takes precedence over any state regulation. Is that a fight you think can be won? In the federal courts here in Arizona? Absolutely. Absolutely. If someone wants to come forward and, and be that test case and do what you say, what can they expect? Is there, I mean, it's going to be a long fight, I imagine. They can expect uh, an excessive amount of litigation, uh, an excessive amount of court fees. Um, it's going to be a long battle. It's, so it's, it's really for a company who wants to set the tone and standards uh, for that industry stepping into Arizona. Will there be any criminal charges, do you think? Um, <laughs> Given the state of Arizona, possibly. Likely, I should say. But, but there's an interesting case in California. Uh, people will be Freeman. And in 83, Harold Freeman was a owner of a production company. And he produced and directed... Uh, a movie called Caught From Behind Part 2. And he went out and... you got to admit, they have some great titles. <laughs> great in the titles, end of, right? I, they're really <laughs> great. They're just so good. Uh, absolutely. No pun intended, right? Yeah, absolutely. And he hired actresses and actors from a modeling acting company, and he paid the commission fee, and he paid the actors and actresses directly uh, to be in his adult film. And he... Completed the film, and subsequently he was prosecuted by the state leg the state uh, local uh, district attorney uh, for pandering. And the state essentially was arguing, uh, you went out and hired actresses, you paid them money, so essentially you committed prostitution. And the court, in examining uh, the fundamentally protected commercial speech of Harold Freeman and that particular movie, first determined that there were no previous court determinations that the movie was found to be obscene. And they determined that there was no direct evidence to suggest that Harold Freeman uh, had paid these actors and actresses uh, for his own sexual gratification or arousal or those individual mm -hmm. actors and actresses. Mm -hmm. And so they couldn't prove it, those elements of the case. What's interesting though is that they charged Harold Freeman on five counts of pandering based on the sexual acts in the film by the actresses, not the actors. Oh, of I course. thought that was kind of interesting, well, right? They, they arrest <laughs> prostitutes, but not Johns. Well, not the Johns. I mean, right. I hate to play the female card, yeah, but yeah. you know, I, I think it's true. We're talking about people v. Freeman. Is that something you can use as a precedent for your test case in Arizona? And well, I have to tell you, you know, all my legal stuff from Law and Order. So that's about uh, what you're getting that's with That's actually me. a pretty good show. Um, <laughs> You can certainly use the, the analysis um, analyzed by the Supreme Court in California uh, for a base of arguments and additional research. 
but there's there's well known precedents in terms of commercial free speech and what it protects, and the standards, uh, what you have to prove in terms of these regulations affecting that freedom of speech. So there's well established press law out there. Are there other industries that have had to fight for commercial free speech? You know, one notable one was uh, the right for uh, attorneys to uh, advertise. So the 1-800-SUE-YOUR-DOCTOR. Commercial right. free speech. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Now I know what I'm up against. Right, yeah. And any else you can think of, or is that pretty much the biggest one? You know, not off my head right now, but... Um, is this something the tobacco industry would be interested in, given that they can't advertise their products on TV? Is that that same sort of... I think it's a different of... story okay. than tobacco, and given the, the harmful effects well known in, in the medical scientific literature, I think it's a whole different genre. So drug companies as well not something that they would be interested in or is that something that would affect them commercial free speech? Well pharmaceutical companies do advertise mm -hmm. but they have these required disclaimers of what type of side effects uh, per that drug but they advertise on a regular basis. Okay and uh, pornography is filmed a lot in Florida as well. Have there been any test cases there? Has that gone through the courts or have, are people pretty much just doing their thing and not being bothered? No, I don't know. I didn't do any national research for the article. Um, I just pretty much looked at California because the onslaught of, of what the county attorney was, was trying to set forth on a public stage was the encroachment of production companies from California. Great. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about in terms of pornography in Arizona? No, I, I really encourage any production company to, to really stand up and, and fight for their commercial free speech, First Amendment. Um, I think it's a legitimate issue to challenge and you know the first production company that, that steps up can really set the stage for, for a certain business. Yeah, it sounds like they have to be really prepared for a long time. Absolutely, though. absolutely. And just on a lighter note, so you like Law & Order. I think it's a fairly uh, written show. Uh, there's, uh, it's entertaining, to say the least. Because I, as a physician, I can't stand medical shows. I think I just, <laughs> I think they're just drama, 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 drama. Sure, sure. Uh, and I have issues with some of the medicine, but I just always wonder what well, uh, the only, law the only, and order. The only caveat is that you don't get to your trial in one one. Yeah, day, it's like know? a couple of years <laughs> and everything. Yeah. But yeah, but, I mean, it's entertaining. But I, I, I talked to a police officer and I said, oh, so you call them perps? And he goes, no, we never call them perps. But in Law & Order, they always call sure, them perps. Sure, sure. So this is what we call our um, shameless plug segment. So if you want to send a plug out there for your test case or anything else, please let us know. We'll have a lower third. We'll put your uh, anything you like down there. And uh, You know, if anybody wants to contact me uh, for any issues related to any type of criminal conduct or perhaps... Uh, this type of issue we're discussing today, you can find me online at criminallawaz.com. And I'd be more than happy to provide a free consultation. And thanks again. I really You're appreciate you coming on. I, I, it was just so enlightening, and it's a, a really interesting topic well, for, thanks for us. Having me. And, and I just want to say, folks, thanks for tuning in again. And now here's your FU Clip of the Week.